Hi, this is Dave, W7UUU. Today we're going to be talking about a pretty cool piece of radio gear from 1990. This is called the Transworld TW100F Fly Away Transceiver, which was designed under contract for the United States State Department for use in embassies and government facilities around the world for reliable, portable communications using HF. So it's a 125 watt transceiver that covers from 1.6 to 30 megahertz continuously. There's no band gaps. It's housed in a very heavy custom Halliburton shock mount case. Altogether, it weighs about 30 pounds. So this is designed for non-radio people to operate. So it's very simple and it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles that most ham radio type people would expect to see. So just going left to right, I'll explain some of the basic features. The main control panel down below, we have a headphone jack for using standard headphones. There's a key jack for CW. The, head, or the headset jack is for the uh, ElectroVoice H250 uh, handset with push to talk with microphone and speaker. These were designed for the PRC radios of the, the 1960s and very common item to find in military radio communication gear. There is a speaker switch so you can turn it on and listen to the speaker directly but even when the switch is turned off there's still audio present on the handset so if you want to have a private conversation uh, you can use the speaker off position there's a nondescript meter that's just zero to 100 because again embassy workers don't care about s units or watts they just want to know that it's working and the higher the deflection when you're transmitting the better and that's pretty much how the manual describes it we've got multiple modes we've got lower sideband upper sideband am and as mentioned, CW, just by plugging in a key. So we get CW on lower sideband or CW on upper sideband, uh, whichever you choose. Uh, there is a digital display, LCD display. There is a manual up and down frequency adjust. It's super slow. It's not exactly designed to spin the dial and whip up and down the band. So it's really more for making small adjustments. If you're in the channel mode, there's a scan button to allow you to scan the 100 pre-programmed channels if you wish. Direct frequency entry is accomplished with the keypad by just going to channel zero. So you would go C00 and then you would enter in the frequency that you want and hit the F button and that will then put you on whatever frequency you want. And then you can fine tune your way around once you're in the general area that you want to be. There's a clarifier. So when you're using single sideband, because it only has 100 hertz resolution, this gives you a little bit more variability in the signal to dial in a spoken voice to uh, make it sound more intelligible. To the right of the keypad, we have a 14 pin auxiliary uh, port. This allows for a number of different uh, accessories, one of which being a terminal that gave you a keyboard and a display to use RTTY teletype. I think there was also a voice encryption system that was available as well that could plug into here uh, and an external antenna tuner. The built-in tuner is all manual. It's very basic. There's three knobs, one called Z-Match for impedance match with the 50 ohm section highlighted. Then there is variable inductance and variable capacitance like you'd expect in a standard manual tuner. And the manual gives basic instructions on how to set the tuner up. We've got uh, an SO239 jack for using a 50 ohm antenna, but the kit originally came with wires, uh, 49 foot and uh, 29 foot, I believe, uh, long wire antennas that could be used with a radial wire. So we've got a ground terminal and our in-fed wire would go here. And of course they have that capped off because of uh, safety concerns. To the right of the accessory port, there is a 12 volt input port. Uh, the radio normally runs off of any voltage that you're gonna find in the world from 115 for US market up to uh, 240 volts. And there's a selector switch on the side up here where you can select the, the input voltage. And as I said, one of the accessories available was an auto antenna tuner. If that was plugged into the accessory port, you could just hit the auto tune button and that would take care of your, your tuning for you. So in operation, the radio does give up to 125 watts PEP, but you can also switch it down into the 10 watt position. Uh, if you're concerned about your signal going too far or being too strong, you can always kick it down into low power. My unit has uh, some issues with it. I'm only getting about 20 watts output on CW. And if I go to AM, I get about 40 watts uh, of AM. So I, I do have some work to figure out on, on that. So speaking of service, underneath this panel, on the top and on the bottom, there are three separate modules that handle all of the transceiver's functions internally. 
And they're really interesting that they're, it's designed to be field serviceable uh, by swapping the modules. So the troubleshooting section of the manual talks about what is the problem you're having, and then it tells you which module is probably at fault. And then you can order that module, bring it in and replace it without having to send the whole transceiver back. Um, is it easy to do? I would say not. Um, the modules are bolted three on the top, three on the bottom, and all of the connections are right under here. And they're essentially, they're hard line coax uh, in the form of copper pipes, uh, little copper pipes with uh, SMA connectors on them that, that are the coax connections from one module to the next. So it's, it's a little tricky to service, but I think the idea was at your embassy in Dubai or wherever, you could just ping the factory in Escondido, California, tell them which module you have that you think has failed, and they'd ship the module out to somebody with some appropriate technical skills on site to change, and then you don't have to ship the entire radio all the way back to California. So uh, not really serviceable by the people that used it, but definitely field serviceable uh, as much as a radio like this could be. So the next uh, couple of videos you're going to see um, in this uh, presentation will show it actually up and operating, and it actually has really, really good audio characteristics. The receive audio is, um, is just superb, and the reports I was getting from the, the microphone of the H250 uh, handset uh, reported it as very contest-sounding like, so compressed and tightly EQ'd uh, for maximum intelligibility. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Dave, W7UUU. W7VK, W7VK from W7UUU. Do you copy? W7UUU, this is W7VK. Yes, I copy you. Great. You're at least 40 over 9 here, Dave. Sounding great. Well, likewise here, Jim, your uh, great signal here. I am on the Flyaway HF transceiver. This is the spy radio I told you about, and uh, it's rated for 125, but um, the output is a little lower than it's uh, supposed to be, but um, still doing a pretty good job. Um, so yeah, great signal here, over. Oh, that's great, and this is a real DX too, so you know, that means something. I'm impressed with the audio quality on that rig. I think it sounds quite good, and uh, uh, yeah, it sounds very nice. Well, likewise, I, I uh, feel the same way with your audio. It's just absolutely crisp and clean. But, you know, this radio was designed for, um, I think, the purpose of being idiot-proof and, and virtually indestructible. So other than my power output being a little low, um, but outside of that, it's uh, pretty impressive. So, all right, well, thanks for the quick contact, and um, we'll say 73. W7VK from W7UUU. W7UUU, W7VK here. Very good, Dave. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, my radio must not be idiot proof, but uh, we'll work on that. So good talking to you, 73 to you, and we'll talk to you again, W7VK. All right, so now we're going to try CW. So I have set it to upper sideband. And you get CW by simply having a key plugged into the key jack. So I've got my key plugged in. Um, so I, I am on CW. Turn my volume up a little bit. The side tone is very quiet. You can only really hear it when you're wearing the headphones. Um, so I'm going to be sending mostly silently here. It doesn't do side tone loud out through the speaker.
Okay, there you go. That's CW operation on the flyaway HF transceiver uh, embassy state department slash spy radio from 1990.